The, we, in the upper left hand corner, we have the green team. Valinor in the Easter. Oh, wait, not, that's not Valinor. That would be Valinor in the Steampunk Helix and Eric Ross in the Easter Osprey. And their opponents, the blue team in the bottom right hand corner, KS Dragon in the Shark Chopper once again, and Pelbury in the Raptor Neo. And we will see a crap ton of levelers and generators going down by Valinor and Akros. Four levelers going down by Akros. Um, and two generators by uh, by Valinor. Two more. Valinor's going to put down two more. I don't know if they're going to plan for that last socket um, at the forward. Um, but KS going straight for uh, soldiers. Oh, I think he's either going to go... KS is either going to go here for the defense or here for the cheese. Um, I would expect... Um, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. We have Sam's. Oh, man. This is so weird. That's that's eight Sam's. I think they might be going for a cheese also. Um, and Chaos looks like I, I would assume that he's going for the cheese. Pelbury with a single Dillo. I'm not really sure where he's going to go for it. Um, and Chaos, yes, he is going for the cheese. And Valinor and, and Akros are going for the cheese as well. Um, and now Chaos with nothing to contest him over here. But Valinor is coming back. He has a bunch of Dillos in queue. Probably will be able to shut this down. And Akros, in the meantime, was with Sam's. Holy crap, they were able to take this so fast. Um, and uh, Valinor actually lost this one, and he said he messed up, darn. He didn't put any defensive units over here, but uh, he does have quite a lot of Dillos over here, so he probably will send them immediately on attack, but actually, Akros has actually taken this as well, so so it's kind of even, even though uh, we have those weird loadouts, um, the super weird loadouts, but we're just going to have a bunch of Dillos spammed over here by Blue Team, but, uh, and uh, and Pelbury trying to, uh, no, I don't think he killed anything. Um, but we do have Chaos Dragon with a lot of Dillos over here, and Val Valinor with a lot of Dillos as well. We already we do see both of them at level 2. Chaos has level 2. I think that is because he did take this outpost. Valinor does go down. There are too many Dillos over there. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Um, and and Akros uh, is battling out with Pelbury. There is absolutely nothing over here at the front door um, at, at, at Blue's Fort protecting at all. And Chaos has been able to finish off all the, all the creeps over there. And Valinor resocketing that, socketing that leveler um, is going to try to drop some creeps for neutralization, but there are too many Dillos here. I don't know why he's deciding to go with this. Using, but but that's the thing though. Chaos did not get a good surround and left a completely open side, and so Valinor is going to be able to get. Oh no, Chaos doing a really good job uh, spamming pr uh, those infantry. Um, I know I know people don't like hearing "good job" and spamming in the same phrase, but he, that's what he did. He did a really great job. He, that's exactly what he needed to do: spam that infantry to be able to keep that outpost under his control and. Uh, now Chaos Dragon, uh, getting chased down by Akros in that tickle. Oh my god, oh, did get finished off. Trying to transform away from Akros, but those following, uh, Seeker Missiles was able to finish him off there on the ground, um, when he landed. And, uh, right now this outpost is still blue, but I would still like to see a better surround of Dillos. Like, there's, uh, there's kind of too many here and kind of too many here. You can remove this one and put the, put it here at the corner or something, something like that, to be able to get a better, uh, coverage. Um, KS now chasing down Valinor. Valinor having a really hard time dealing with all these Dillos. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that double cheese actually happened right now. That is, I, I've always wanted to actually cast a two-star Maverick double cheese. Hey guys, if you see a two-star Maverick, um, or if you, if you, if you, if you see any two or one-star level games where this kind of thing happens, where there is a double cheese, send it to me. Please, God, send it to me. I want to, I, I want to see that. Um, and right now, Val, uh, Akros is kind of struggling to hold this. They don't have enough credits because they have just levelers, and blue team has plenty of Dillos to be able to go, come up here. But Akros mixing up his probes in this in his build queue, keeping this uh, keeping this outpost alive. Palbury almost gonna get finished off, but transforms in time and gets finished off by that those following attacking uh, attacking unit uh, shots. And Valinor now setting up artillery. Yes. God, oh, it does get finished off in the air before you can get back to that outpost. And now artillery raining down on these Dillos. There is no uh, contesting artillery that KS has put up. And now KS has respawned, coming back to that top fight um, while while uh, Akros and and, uh, and Pelbury are here at the bottom fight. There is nothing defending this fort. It's really, really dangerous to have absolutely nothing defending there, um, especially with someone that has your close... Um, and especially with Dillos, um, but right now we do see Chaos still having. Uh, oh, but has to has to move his Dillos away from this front area because those artillery are raining in. It's just, I mean, there's nothing that you can do. Does uh, another one does get killed by all those artillery? Oh my God! Valinor has four, three Arties in on, on there right now. Um, 
and uh, it's levels five to three, and we do have a, a four Dillo push coming out for KS. It's not huge, but it is sizable enough that it will have force Valinor to do something because he doesn't have any ground defense units over here. Um, and Akros, oh, Akros did get killed by Pelbria. I'm not sure when that happened, but there are a couple Dillos here pushing at the front door. Valinor is able to kill off a couple because that, uh, I don't know if this was the right decision by Blue Team. Blue Team probably should have went for unit kills, like artillery killing the artillery and stuff, because they definitely have the advantage here. Um, be having that close outpost and having no, uh, you know, having their team, their their opponents with no money makers. But now they have basically no defenses left here, and um, and uh, you know, th that was kind of they kind of threw that away. If KS could have massed enough uh, Dillos sitting at the back of that outpost and, and you know did a quick scout or something just to check whether or not Valinor had a lot of ground defense, he could have you know waited one or two more minutes, got a lot more Dillos, and um you know, pushed for that fort and get a huge, you know, a lot of damage down. Um, and But Valinor, I would assume that Valinor was probably holding a lot of Dillos in his queue to begin with, just because he kind of expected that kind of thing to come. But now there is absolutely nothing over here defending. Chaos is the only thing over here. Has two Dillos coming down, but it's, I, you know, this is probably going to be neutralized. He doesn't have any defensive infantry queued up. Um, and uh, Akros now, what is Akros doing? Akros going for a moneymaker with two uh, two uh, Dillos in support. Uh, that does, is not able to finish that off before Pelbri actually picks that up. And Chaos with just three Dillos over here. Valinor still has all these artillery raining in. That push was not successful at all. It, and and you know, he would have had a couple of extra Dillos by this time uh, to be able to support that initial push. Um... So, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, oh, man. So now Valinor has been able to uh, to neutralize this chaos. Going for the front door once again, but not great placement. One is blocked by this Dillo. I think this one was firing in before it died. Um, but now this outpost is back to green. And with no money makers, no, uh, no late game units, even though it doesn't really matter quite yet. They are only level six. Um, but with just levelers, um, they didn't... What else was the other handicapped guys? I completely forgot. Um... Uh, it was like uh, no. Uh, 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 they, they oh I I I did I didn't allow Valnor or Akros to have uh, either jackals or rebels or zippers. So uh, for that neutralization thing, um, they have been able to take this down to neutral. Um, and uh, let's see, one sec, Pelbri. Uh, okay, but but blue team is bringing some. Uh, yeah, Chaos is bringing some creeps over. But Valnor with probes. Probes are so good at going in outposts. I know that's kind of a, like an obvious thing to say, but if you are if you're going for a contested neutral outpost, nothing better than probes. Um, maybe like uh, runners because there's some surrounding uh, enemy units or something like that, but nothing better than probes. Absolutely nothing better than probes. Um, it, it's uh, it, they're so damn fast that if, if you know if you have been able to neutralize an outpost go with probes and chaos trying to sell off this soldier um not actually successfully doing it uh, finally does though but Akros going uh, putting a little bit of pressure here at the front door um has uh oh god gonna get killed gun <laughs> but but uh you know it has been able to take down a moneymaker and that's definitely worth it valinor now still trying to take down this this factory um and uh I mean, he set. Did he set these on attack? That's kind of strange. Because if they were sent on capture, I would assume they would stay here-ish. Uh, but now Chaos Dragon able to finish off those Dillos. Uh, and uh, but I mean, you know, obviously Green Team still has map control. No one pushing for mid whatsoever after that double cheese. That was very, very interesting. Um, and now Valinor is um, no, not not didn't have any units survive over there. Just had that single Dillo. Um, but we do see that Valinor and Akros are both level seven. Um, and blue team is only two levels away from being able to make Dillos. Uh, one one level away from being able to make Virthus. So um, they, if they can hold out and actually properly position and use those things, and KS and Akros fighting out over here, but KS getting, uh, oh man, and he does land and try to regen. Oh, and Akros with that great liftoff timing does finish off KS in the air. And now Akros, um, uh, and now Valinor are pushing for mid. That is kind of funny. But you know, with that extra power, I mean. Uh, do they really need it at this point? They have plus 52, and um, they have they have uh, a bunch of levelers on the ground. Oh, I can I completely for I always forget that I can look at these loadout counters because they work in live. Um, this is four. They have four levelers down and six generators. God, that's a lot. And Agros, uh, 
keeping those probes going down, keeping those lights lit. Helbri getting killed by Valinor, getting that double kill. Um, and what is left at Blue's Fort after that push? Um, there is pretty much nothing. There's just four Dillos. I'm not even sure why they left those four, four Dillos, to be honest. If, 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 if it, it should have been an all-in to begin with, because they have their close. If, they, if that push was, uh, you know, a failed push, then it's kind of like, you know, what, what, they kind of had nothing left anyway, so, um, you know, you need to really commit to what you're trying to do, and now one stray Dillo starts to move, I guess that was just kind of a misclick by Akros, he does bring it back and set it on hold position, but now Valinor clearing the majority of mid, um, no artillery up here by Blue Team, but Blue Team is, um, you know, at least they still have that forward, at the very least they still have that forward, and Aegis does go down by Valinor, um, I think that was built, actually. I'm not really sure if that was built or if that was just moved over there. But all these units, all these neutral units are going to be killed. And Pelbri, oh god, Pelbri getting killed again. Dropping with that EMP right in the middle of all these, um, all these artillery. Which is kind of a good idea, but um, not in that case. Not in that specific case. That was probably not something that he should have done. Uh, and there was no artillery firing in. Like, there was nothing contesting it. So that was kind of just like a... Is sort of, you know, sort of pointless. Um, oh, and we do see Pelbri going for the fourth. Then just try to, to 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 shoot right at the front door, but so many defensive seekers. Um, and Pelbri does get back to his fourth though, or factory. And we do see Akros coming up with a leapfrog. Uh, Dillos and Seekers uh, will be able to slowly edge um, on this fort, bringing the Archies within range of those front door units. Um, and uh, Pelbri trying to fire in with an EMP does not die actually before he uh, before uh, he lifts off. Uh, I would have kind of expected getting that close to all those units. He would have been killed almost immediately, but did get away before he got killed. Um, and now, uh, there, but look at all these Dillos, look at all these um, artillery, look at these Seekers. There is kind of too much for Blue Team to handle. Valinor ferrying these Aegis from way over the, on the other side of the map. But uh, <laughs> to be honest, there's no missile firing things except for that chopper. Um, there are just those Dillos over here, so there's no like missile firing units, and they're just stacking Dillos in hopes to, to hold off a push, but little do they know, these artillery are just going to smash and destroy and disintegrate everything that is sitting over here at the fort, um, and uh, oh god, Valinor kills KS Dragon after that barrage of Seeker missiles also uh, hits him in the air, um, so I would have, I, I do think that the majority of the, um, that the majority of oh and we do see a turtle out on the front um not really I mean, it's kind of pointless nothing was in range of these front units anyway um and they're not really pushing up yet so valinor hiding behind these, that turtle and that dillo oh god but he getting hit on the ground oh but that across is there to heal him up um and this osprey chopper combo is super super effective um and all these dillos are getting just hit by all that splash damage look at all those numbers popping up um, and Valinor and Akros are slowly making their way with that turtle um, <laughs> and, and these artillery. I'm kind of surprised not to see more artillery um, just because it will speed up the process. Uh, and at this point, actually, I kind of want to see... Look at all these Dillos. There's 20 Dillos down by Pelbri and 6 by... Oh, okay, I, I was going to say something about pushing and that is what they're doing. Uh, kind of not doing it in the way that I would want to see them, you know, starting with the back units just so you can have more of a large clump in progress toward wherever you're pushing. Um, but look at all these Dillos coming up here. I Actually, I think this will work. I think they will be able to neutralize this unless Akros... Yes, Akros is uh, queuing up a bunch of defensive probes. Probably will be able to hold this for a fair amount of time. Um, if not, actually completely hold it. Oh god, those Dillos were ferried over so well. There was a big clump of Dillos over here. They got moved over here. Uh, Valinor and Akros with the two high carry capacity mechs where we're able to bring their defenses wherever they want extremely quickly um, and this Dillo push has been shut down um, and this time they only left two Dillos sitting over here one more oh that might have actually been uh, built afterwards by Pelbri Pelbri uh, putting down more I think he actually is just trying to heal up but now we are in quarter three um, and Pelbri dropping the GG um, oh, and actually a couple of the Dillos were able to reach the front door here, um, and Valinor queuing up uh, fixers to get that salvage. It's just, uh, I, I personally don't have the presence of mind to actually do that. Um, and we do see a turtle on the move. We do see a turtle on the move. I'm going to close up to this turtle because turtles are awesome. Turtle. What's up, turtle? What's up, turtle? What's up, turtle? I know there's a bunch of other stuff that I should be watching, but oh god, no. Akros swooped that turtle away. <laughs> 
<laughs> and is just gonna put it right at the front door. There is pretty much nothing left here for uh for for uh blue team. But blue team was able to last a little bit longer, up to one minute and fifty fifty three seconds, uh, give or take, uh, a little bit of time left in quarter three than last time. So that handicap did you know bring them further another quarter. Um. So that is pretty interesting. And Valorant and Gakros do finally finish off this sport against Chaos Dragon and Pelbri in this custom Pros vs. Joes round two <laughs> on duel. And uh, if you if you had hit Goliath, we would have lost. Yeah, that kind of. Um, I mean, if they if they were able to produce them, to be honest. Um, but yeah, we they they okay, not would have, but they could have lost. Yeah, that's that was the thing. Goalies wreck armadillos, and that's 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 so that that's kind of what I wanted to see. I, I would have been very 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 excited to see Goliaths roll up on these pro armadillos. <laughs> but, but. Um, but this game did go to Akros and Valinor. Round two of Pros versus Joes did go to these archetype players. This is RUI, and that is game. See you next time.